Can I invite my co-panelists up as well? Please join me. I think we have a microphone. Microphones are going to be given away. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this panel on the Internet of Things. My name is Alexandra Deschamps-Soncino, and it's a really great honor to be here today on Arduino Day. I uh, was one of the first students to use Arduino at the Interaction Design Institute Ivrea back in 2005, I think, in a physical computing class that I was really terrible at. And uh, Massimo was very, very patient with me at the time. Um, it led eventually to me becoming the first UK distributor of Arduino, and that was 11 years ago. So it's been a very long journey for Arduino, and this is a real pleasure to be here today. I am, of course, not alone, and we have a fantastic panel of experts who I'm going to have a conversation with, and we're going to talk about the Internet of Things. We're going to talk about what has led us to this point today and what's coming. Um, and so I'm joined by uh, Stefania Gilli, who is from uh, Vodafone, and she is country manager at, uh, in Italy for all of the IoT work. Um, Luca Cipriani is a CIO of Arduino, so a real uh, expert in everything that's coming up as well in the world of IoT. And uh, Loïc Dubuc is uh, based in Shenzhen, and he's going to be bringing in a really different perspective, which is the perspective of entrepreneurship and growing business in the world of IoT. And Michael Aman, who is at Ublox, one of the core partners we've just heard of some of the IoT products that are coming up. And then online, we should hopefully, do we have Max Selby uh, with us from ARM? Hi, everyone. I'm here. Wonderful. Hello, Zach. Um, we do not see you on a screen, but I'm assuming that people online can see you on a screen. So thank you for joining us. He's joining us from Helsinki today, um, and he is vice president of IoT at ARM. So, everyone, what do we think led us to this place? Um, can I get Stefania, firstly, to talk a little bit about your history of IoT at Vodafone? We're here in the center, in the heart of Vodafone. So what have you guys been up to, and what has led us to this partnership today? OK, hi, everyone. Uh, so it's a long story uh, with IoT and Vodafone. Started uh, since um, uh, probably uh, beginning of the year 2000. So we are talking about uh, more than 15 years. And by the way, the whole concept of IoT is not a new. It has been around about 17 years now. But uh, we do believe that uh, um, uh, the uh, potential of the IoT is still uh, in uh, its uh, early days. So uh, we are really happy to partner with, uh, with Arduino and with the other companies which are here today and with our customers as well. Uh, to help them actually to bring solutions uh, and to adopt the IoT technologies uh, into their market. Um, as I said, uh, even though uh, it, is an, um, uh, at an, uh, it is not a new technology, it is uh, at an early stage, so companies can still um, enter, uh, be, become the early adopter in their sectors and get the benefits that normally go with that. Wonderful. Luca. You're now CIO. <laughs> yeah. How did you get to this place and what's been going on that for you? That was nice because I, I met Massimo at a coffee machine in a co-working area. <laughs> then I started as a Linux and DevOps engineer and then step by step we basically built together a team. That was really amazing, starting, starting from ground zero and then uh, building, building something that I think is unbelievable given <laughs> Also, this event is really uh, crazy and, and funny things to do. So, very excited to be here. And inside Arduino, how has IoT kind of evolved as a concept? Yeah, for us as well, it's um, kind of new because Arduino, the, the first board, the Arduino Uno, didn't have connectivity at all. Um, but it was immediately clear that something ha has to happen because, um, you know, now there is a large community, basically everyone, uh, almost everyone, uh, has access to the internet. So it's um, kind of uh, immediate thing to, to think about, to have 
connected devices. So now the step that we are trying to facilitate is to make it easy because internet has, and the protocols and everything is very complex for someone that is not an engineer. And Arduino was not designed initially for engineers. So we are trying to bring the same design philosophy uh, from the hardware to the software and bring them together. Loïc. Hello. Hi, everyone. You started with a, a really amazing project in your dad's kind of garage. Tell us about this. Yeah, it was like a, a yard with uh, many uh, car boxes and it needed an access control system. So I decided to build something uh, like uh, an Arduino bare bones um, for RFID access control system. And I spent the whole summer on there in 2007. It works and still works now, um, but through the pain of the soldering and the wires, the mess, and uh, worrying that it would be a reliable solution, I thought actually a lot of people probably get to this stage now that they're building something with Arduino and then they want to install it permanently. And uh, so after graduation, I moved to China and I started the electronics company. And so the, the first product we launched was a, a an Arduino with a prototyping area that was DIN rail mountable and with screw connectors so that you could take something from the breadboard and install it permanently and leave it for many years and rely on it working. Wonderful. And Michael, your conversation, your journey in the world of IoT, where does that come from inside of Ublox? Yeah, so welcome everybody else for me. So Ublox, probably nobody has heard of that name before because we are just a component manufacturer. We create tiny modules that are used in electronics um, devices, usually hidden somewhere in the background. Um, for us, IoT is not something new. Maybe 10 years ago, IoT was, we named it machine to machine communication. It was a bulky modem that communicated over some cellular network or other means with another machine. And now IoT is much more prominent term that we now use for this technology and it's in everybody is using it. And as a components manufacturer, we want to make it easy for people to use our products. And therefore we have partnered also with Arduino and are very proud that they use our products, build it in a form that people can easily adapt and also, I think what is important, Arduino gives them a way to start with the technology, but also has this possibility to scale afterwards. Maybe realize the idea that you had and sketched in your lab. Maybe make a business out of it. Make a product. And that's why, what is really why we are very excited um, to be on these boards, because I think there is lots of technologies out there that are not yet explored, lots of use cases um, that we will see in the future. Great, thank you. Zach, you are Vice President of IoT at ARM. What has led you through this journey? You've been uh, at ARM for quite some time now. You know, I, I started working with IoT back in 1990 uh, with my, my project was connecting a weather station to the IPv6 internet. So I've always looked at IoT very much as a, as a way for us to connect things, uh, make them open like the web. And when we do that, we can allow people to create all kinds of innovation. Um, and so I've been through the early days of this, uh, created my first startup in IoT back in 2005, which was eventually acquired by ARM. So I've been through these early days of the industry when everything was proprietary and eventually became open. And I think that was one of the biggest uh, things that enabled innovation from a networking perspective. But it always requires a computer to really create things. And this is where we've seen Arduino, you know, do what the Commodore 64 did back in the 1980s when I first started with my first computer. You know, for anyone who started in embedded in the 2000s, you know, Arduino's given them that same experience, create their own ideas and make them into reality. Um, and, and just like uh, several of the other speakers, I would agree there's a huge potential for entrepreneurship in the Arduino community, making products, bringing them to market, 
And the stuff that's happening with the Maker 1000 series with Arduino Creates, really exciting. We're going to see a lot of uh, new innovations and things coming to market thanks to that. Thank you, Zach. So we're kind of describing a landscape that's getting easier and easier for people to build their own business. Um, can I pick up uh, on Loic with your journey as a, a business owner in Shenzhen now? Um, what do you think is, you know, what do you think are some of the um, elements where Arduino can really sort of help someone get to that next level of professionalizing what they're doing? Um, well, very often we see that um, Pro users, they, they need uh, more access to the underlying functions of the microcontroller. And of course, the, the key thing of Arduino is simplicity and making it accessible. But if you want and you understand it, to having a backdoor or uh, a way to access these functionalities, I'm talking about watchdog timers, et cetera, which really are necessary if you want to keep a product running for many years and making uh, would be very useful to, you now you can do it, but you have to dig really deep to do that. But if you can make it accessible, and not by default, but you can get there, and that also includes uh, debugging. So uh, being able to debug a system with a, a normalized system uh, uh, with a debugger, but not making it overly complicated would be a massive plus, I think. Luca, you're in um, you're in a position of being able to respond to this uh, directly, and um, are, is this something you're kind of keeping in mind when you're growing Arduino's ecology of technology, the needs of entrepreneurs like Loic? Yes, indeed, this is. Oops, not working. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, the the main thing is that indeed the Arduino ecosystem was. Um, Many people think that it's still just for makers and educators, while we are uh, shifting to um, real business case for small industries, um, for a small and medium business. And it is, what it just mentioned is absolutely true, so we need uh, to support uh, more debugging and more feature, but also to simplify the process of having and prototyping a uh, simple IoT solution, because we have seen that large companies uh, can, I don't know, hire a PhD in electronics engineer and figure that out how it works and make it. But for a small and medium business, this is kind of impossible, because you cannot really start investing seriously in a technology if you don't have a working prototype. So our idea is to make it easy even for small and business business to have a quick prototype that speaks with the internet. Stefania, yeah, your business I'm sure has seen more and more sort of interest from small and medium enterprises. Um, how are you responding and how are you supporting them at Vodafone? Okay, so uh, we believe that the value that we can bring uh, as Vodafone uh, to the ecosystem uh, um, is um, uh, to deliver and to bring on the market uh, uh, new tools, uh, technologies, uh, and products, uh, and networks, of course, <laughs> uh, which uh, are making it easier than ever to uh, deploy uh, IoT solutions. And I think that uh, um, it all starts from the global IoT connectivity platform that we have. Actually, we are connecting more than 65 uh, thou uh, millions of uh, IoT devices uh, all over the world. Uh, we are present uh, with this platform in more than 37 countries. So I think that the value that uh, Vodafone can, can, can bring is really to scale up, uh, leveraging on our footprint and uh, our uh, skills and competencies that we're happy to develop internally and as well as to partner. Uh, we have been also growing uh, inorganically, uh, acquiring a company in 2013 named Cobra. It's now Vodafone Automotive. Um, and uh, I think it, it is part of the IoT portfolio and the IoT strategy of Vodafone. And, and I think that it is really an example of uh, how we could scale up a company based in Varese on a true global leadership scale. Wonderful. And um, I know that your um, team has been sort of, I think you call it the IoT barometer. Um, what have you learned from sort of asking people about what their IoT dreams are? 
Okay, so it's a research, an independent research that uh, since 2013, Vodafone is uh, running through an independent company. Um, last year, we inter uh, more than 1,000 uh, customers have been interviewed, okay, all over the world. And actually, um, as I said before, uh, even though I2T uh, is well known, um, uh, also the adopters are thinking that uh, uh, the, um, we are still at an early stage in terms of potential. And as I, um, more than uh, three quarters are believing that the transformation is not uh, possible uh, without IoT. And also, for instance, another, another data which was uh, really very interesting for us uh, was that 28%, uh, so almost one third of the companies which are planning to adopt uh, IoT technologies um, are already investigating uh, low power wide area network uh, technologies, so narrowband IoT. And so from, from this kind of data, we, we are optimistic about the future of uh, narrowband IoT, which will be the, the main driver of the, of the next uh, IoT adoption wave. Wonderful, thank you. Michael, um, how are you guys sort of equipped to deal with um, startups, SMEs, people who might have sort of smaller orders than uh, those of Arduino? Or really, is the answer go to Arduino as the preferred platform for SME? Yeah, I think that's a very critical question also. Um, so what we, coming from a pure business to business company, for us, we are used to deal with corporations, orders, and uh, so huge orders. And um, for us, it's really a challenge to address the individuals, the small companies, uh, the, the people that just want to try out a certain idea. And typically, what we've seen is that they also struggle adapting to certain technology because when they want to realize a product, they, they might have to go through a certification lab to get um, approval to sign up on a network. It's not easy. You cannot just switch on like a phone. You really have to spend money. And I think there is where Ublox can add a lot of value with their modules that are pre-certified. So for example, the modules that Arduino use, they have full certification. You can use them on a global basis. You can even... Um, they, they come in a quality that they operate over temperature range. So there, there is a lot of value. And having this available for individuals is, of course, a, a, a huge benefit for them that they don't have to take care about these things. Uh, they can take a solution that works, that's proven to work in the field, but still have access to this technology. And I think that's really um, why we are also so excited to be on those boards that we can help the people realize their ideas and even bring them to production. Yeah. Great. Um, Zach, what are you guys up to at ARM and how are you supporting kind of small and medium enterprises? Well, I actually have a, a slide to show you. Um, I very much think about IoT as a, as a journey in physical computing. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. I would love to think that we are really successful in IoT and we stop talking about it. And maybe we start talking about the innovation of things rather than the internet of things. Um, and it really is a, a journey. We start from, um, from young children uh, where we've been working with things like Scratch, um, Microbit, where I spent the last two years as a CEO, um, just trying to make it really easy to get people into computing. Um, but really, it's the same technology. As you move into high schools, universities, what we call the maker movement. You know, Arduino has really made that accessible and powerful for people. And now, you know, we just heard about running Arduino on things like Raspberry Pis. We can open it up to more computing platforms. But what a lot of people don't realize is that it's the same technology that we use in professional development. So just hearing about the Ublox experience, you know, going to production with modules, we're seeing that across the board. You know, now the new maker... 1000 series is becoming more and more appropriate for making real products that you can bring to market. And so that technology you learn as a young kid and then through your, your growing into a maker, it's really you know, usable in your professional life. And just one example of this, you know, we recently did a little survey on um, 
the use of Arduino in job uh, advertisements on LinkedIn. And there's over a thousand jobs in big companies as well that have, you know, can you imagine that? So this is something that people are really using in their professional lives, um, both as entrepreneurs and as um, professionals in big companies. But I think it's really outstanding. Great. Thank you, Zach. Can I get you all to sort of come back to us a little bit with what you think the biggest challenges are going to be in the next few years coming for someone who is looking at IoT, looking at investing in IoT, whether that's a larger business or a small maker or uh, medium-sized enterprises. What are some of the things that you think people need to start thinking about right now? And I'm going to start counterintuitively with uh, Michael at the other end. Can you? Okay. I think one of the challenges that you need to be aware is security. And security can require you to take care about different things. It's about the data that you transport. It's maybe where you store your information on a device or in the cloud. It's how you authenticate certain devices, how you update them. Um, the interfaces that these are secure, the APIs are secure. You don't want people to hack your device at a certain stage. I think that's, that's something which needs to be built in from the ground in a, in a technology, in the Arduino ecosystem, in, in the operating system, everywhere in there. And I think that will be a big challenge for many companies to master this technology because it's not easy. It's really not easy. Loïc. I think that um, trying to uh, understand the difference of uh, installing something uh, locally and then having a real installation, um, how educating the user about that, I mean, about issues such as uh, EMC, uh, functional safety, um, will become very important to um, know that uh, a signal will degrade over a long cable distance and that you um, you teach the users how to adapt their uh, installations and also about certification to uh, what you said is, is very correct. Uh, Pre-certified modules is very important and simplifies the, the process uh, to finally certify your whole installation because it also has to be done. Um, so yeah, I, th I think uh, um, giving the tools and the knowledge to the community about what are the, the, the struggles that engineers now in large co corporations are struggling with when they're bringing a product to market or bringing an installation to market, to lift the wheel uh, uh, on that and to, to give you that knowledge, is, I think, is important. Luca. Yeah, uh, I do think that security and stability are important, but the, the main thing about IoT is, I think, uh, make sense out of your data, because now, I think gathering data is, I wouldn't say it's a solved problem, but from a pure technology point of view is how actually the internet works. But I really analyzing your data or make uh, rules on top of your data and have a, a way to understand billions of devices connected, that's really the hard thing to do with, um, with an IoT uh, model. So, um, I, I will shift it a bit from just having IoT, something like like human IoT, so IoT that is understandable uh, by human. Otherwise, we, as we said already, we have M to M machine, which is fine, and machine can do a lot of things for us, but we, we have to understand what's going on. So that's the my main concern now. Stefan, yeah. So I confirm security, definitely. Uh, for instance, that's the reason why we uh, develop our platforms uh, with uh, uh, built-in integrated uh, security and privacy uh, from the ground up. Uh, the other one uh, I would mention is about the skills and the competencies. So in order to scale up and to, I mean, to increase the adoption, really the many companies uh, haven't uh, the skills now. What we are seeing is that uh, more and more customers, for instance, are assessing partners to get uh, uh, competencies and skills from them in order to uh, build and manage the IoT platforms. And indeed, the access to the community, I think it's crucial here. Wonderful. Thank you. Zach? 
Any thoughts on um, you know what you see are the biggest challenges? Well, I'm going to take a more of an entrepreneurial business angle here. Um, you know, I act as an angel investor and an advisor for startups around the world. And one of the things I tell a lot of young entrepreneurs that come to me is that you really need to solve a business challenge. You know, go solve a problem that means something to somebody in a vertical. Um, a lot of these big companies, like many of that are talking here today, are solving the horizontal big technology challenges. But there's a lot of value to be had in going and solving a real problem. Uh, you know, one company I work with in California, you know, does very precise uh, vibration analysis on big motors and factories, and they're doing preventative maintenance um, for preventing downtime in factories. You know, it's a really big problem for industry, and something they can solve innovatively using IoT and machine learning. And so I think that's the kind of thing that um, even young innovators, uh, you know entrepreneurs just starting out to medium-sized companies can go and add a lot of value in all kinds of industries. So don't be scared to go solve the end problem um, for someone. Don't get stuck just in technology. Wonderful. Don't get stuck on technology. I think the last question for our panel today is just to reflect on where Arduino is now, the journey that it's taken to get us here today to Arduino Day 2018. Let's give Arduino and its team that are already so busy, but let's give them some homework for the next years to come. What would be the homework that you would give Arduino? What are some of the things that you would quite like to see that you're not seeing now? Some inspiration for the team, some long-term sort of dreams and aspirations. Um, I'll start with Loïc because you're really, you know, I think you have some clear ideas there. I, I think I'll be repeating myself. But it's what, what I hear from uh, people contact me all the time, it's debugging, they would love to see debugging, so I, I agree with that, because uh, I, I did at university, I was using very uh, old data tools, and yeah, they were horrible to learn, but once you learned, you used them, it was amazing, and I think uh, Arduino could really make uh, beautiful debugging tools that are uh, easy to use, but uh, accelerate your process massively, and um, would uh, make a lot of things possible that are impossible now, and uh, just uh, seeing what's happening inside of your microcontroller and uh, not having to use serial print all the time. Wonderful. Um, Michael, where would you like to see Arduino go as you continue on this partnership? I think, like, having a clear path to production for innovators, some something which makes that easy, I think that would be a really great um, uh, possibility. And I see lots of signs from the team that they work on opening their designs, that you can license things. Uh, I think driving in that direction is the right way for us, yeah. I think that there will be huge benefit for the community. So more of what you're seeing now and just uh, more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, m maybe the other thing is uh, there is also powerful uh, computation boards out there already, like the Raspberry Pi, and, and maybe something as simple as the Arduino on the more powerful side, that would be great too. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I'm going to switch back to uh, Zach to keep him on his toes. And what would you give as homework to Arduino in the years to come? Well, something that I have a lot of experience now is, um, you know, working with young children and seeing this whole new generation of kids get involved with computing. Um, and one of the things we're seeing is that um, there's a lot of people with backgrounds that aren't necessarily embedded engineers or nerds, but they want to be designers, right? They want to be architects. They want to be artists and get involved with this technology. And so one of the challenges that we all have is how do we make it a lot easier um, and, you know, lower the barrier of entry. And so exploring things like JavaScript, right, Python, how do we make, you know, drag and drop block programming part of the Arduino experience in the future is really interesting. You know, how do we make it easy for web developers to get involved with, um, with Arduino and, and making things? And I think this is something all of us need to think about, you know, how do we make this less and less nerdy and more and more, you know, easily accessible? Less and less nerdy. Stefania, your homework is Vodafone for Arduino moving forward. 
Yeah, actually, I would say keep on challenging us because uh, they do have the flexibility. Uh, we have the robust robustness uh, in order to, to help. And if I may add also some uh, STEM, <laughs> because I mean, uh, I want to, to do it, uh, I mean, uh, I want to, to, to bring here the, the gender uh, topic, so I think that maybe some Arduino female, I don't know, something like that, because I, th I think it's something that uh, we don't have enough. It's a, it's a huge problem, especially for the Latin countries, maybe not, uh, not in all countries, but for us, uh, we, are, uh, we need to push uh, in order to, to have more girls uh, and women uh, involved in technology. We have to work a lot. <laughs> yes, you've got all the homework now, yeah, Luca. Yeah. And, and we also have uh, some ideas to extend also what Zach just said is um, two different things. One is to bring uh, web developers to actually start using hardware, which is like a huge community, and everyone is taking care about hardware people start using IT, but there is also a super huge community that wants to start building physical things. And the other thing is to uh, let makers for Arduino, which is our core community right now, see, hey, you can start your own company. We can help you in uh, being a small company, then a medium company, and then you, know, you can work with, <laughs> with your feet and do whatever you, you like. So those are our big challenges, I think, for, for Arduino in the next coming years. Well, thank you for sharing those challenges with us. Thank you for all the panelists. Can I get a round of applause for the panelists today? <laughs> thank you to Zach online from Helsinki for joining us. And thank you for everyone online for listening in. I now introduce to you, as we swiftly move away from the floor, I now introduce Andrew Bickley from Arrow, who has a special message for us today.